and a Buddhist Mythbusters, Myth 3, Buddhists are supposed to be happy all the time. What's really interesting in this myth is the use of the word supposed, which is basically informing you that there's a certain way of being that's acceptable. Is Buddha, sitting in his cloud, telling you to be happy? Is that what a Buddhist has to be? But what if you're not? So if Buddhists are meant to be happy, what about all the other world's religions? The people who practice them, what are they meant to be feeling all the time? This myth implies that a Buddhist should be happy and bright all the time, but if they're not, do they lose something as a result? Just what is happiness from a Buddhist perspective? Googling images of happiness makes it really clear happiness is achievable if you are young, fit, able to jump in the air with your arms up raised, and possibly balloons add to that experience. But is this actually what happiness is? Going into any Buddhist bookstore, or non-Buddhist bookstore for that matter, there are so many books that tie happiness to Buddhism, so it's quite easy to see why you might think that Buddhism is purely about happiness. Some Buddhist iconography can also lead you to that conclusion too. But also, there are other Buddhist images like this, and Buddhist teachings that talk about suffering. So how do we reconcile happiness and suffering? Happiness itself cannot be easily defined. One definition of happiness is hedonic happiness. Hedonic happiness is that kind of pleasure-based happiness that you have. You meet someone, you go on a date, things get a bit steamy, that kind of pleasure. But there's other kinds of pleasure too that can be derived through music and physical activity and imagination. The second kind is eudaimonic. And this is the kind of well-being happiness that comes from personal growth. It comes from connection with others, care for others, and that sense of freedom, personal freedom, that can come with or without balloons and jumping. This kind of well-being is a really significant part of modern psychology. But what of all the other human emotions that we experience, that rich palette of feelings that we have? What about them? If we're just happy all the time, aren't we losing what all of those other emotions and feelings give to us and give back to society? If we lose them, do we lose being human? This myth explores three main points. Is happiness the goal of Buddhism? What kind of happiness are we talking about? And what about the value of other emotions and what they give us? So come along to the third in this series of Buddhist Mythbusters, where we'll be exploring how to be truly happy.